Oh, 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 oh. Hello, everyone. This is a quick departure from my normal King of the Hill content, but indulge me for a moment. Let's talk about Khan Supanusen phone just for one second. Or rather... Several hundred. Ah, everyone's favorite neighbor. Khan is a pretty funny and interesting character. By all accounts, he should be unlikable because he's such an elitist jerk to Hank and his neighbors. But Khan actually has a lot of understandable and redeeming qualities. And he's pretty badass. I'll show you my marbles! Ha! You wanna go? Let's go! Ha! We fight! He did this while drunk, y'all. I've already briefly discussed Khan in some other King of the Hill videos, namely that his backstory is pretty well fleshed out in seemingly throwaway lines. But let's do a quick character analysis, because his background goes a bit deeper than you think. Khan is introduced in the first season of King of the Hill, where he reveals that he lived in California for a few years before coming to the area. However, according to Min, he's lived in a number of other places too. Portland, Mississippi for God's sake! Before coming to the U.S., Khan grew up in Laos and is a descendant of fishermen, according to his father-in-law. He shared stories about he and Min met with Connie, which Min later reveals to her was just a front. Instead of meeting at a science museum, as Connie was previously told, they actually met on the streets of Laos when Khan pulled up to her home in a shiny moped, sporting a pompadour and stylish disco clothes. Oh, and did I mention that Khan likes to sing? A lot? Rock the casbah, rock the casbah, Sherry don't like it. Blinded me with science. Do, do, do. She blinded me with science. There's got to be a morning after. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, hey, Mickey. Khan's wife, Min, is the daughter of a high-ranking general in Laos, and was set up to date another person of high social status, but was attracted to Khan's bad boy attitude. Sometime later, Khan lived in Cambodia in the killing fields for two years. After that, he and Min defected to the U.S. due to the... Horrible dictatorship! And he begins work in the IT industry as a systems analyst, though it isn't known if he went to school abroad or in the U.S. Min herself is a stay-at-home mom and has alluded to be part of Connie's extracurricular activities, including soccer and PTA. Khan will put his hand in, too, if it means... Sure would be nice to finally get a Laotian in power! We gotta eat their fish on Friday, they gonna eat our rice noodles on Wednesday! Board Games is such a brilliant episode, if only for this gem of a scene. Kicking your ass! No one threatens me. I'm this close to kicking your ass. Oh, yeah? Well, now I'm this close to kicking your ass. A Dale versus Khan fight isn't something I didn't realize I needed until now. I wonder who would win. <laughs> Monkey style! <laughs> so, let's look at Khan's personality. Khan is a clout-chasing elitist and also incredibly insecure. He's obsessed with joining an exclusive all-Asian country club, Nine Rivers Country Club, by any means necessary, even using Hank to leverage this. He somehow finagles his way into a first-name basis with Ted Wasanasong, a wealthy member of the club that is also Laotian, and believe it or not, is voiced by Mike Judge himself. He even manages to get invited to his home. Min and Khan both want Connie to date Ted's son, Chain, Though it is implied to be because they are also Laotian, not because they want to get on Ted's good side. Not many Laotian boys in Ireland! Don't piss this away! However, even when Min is able to get them into the club, it doesn't look like Khan really jives with the high society culture. It's the au pair who slaps you after you chase her into the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, I really taste that. Speaking of the Laotian background, there's a great episode in the later seasons in which Ted guilts Khan into connecting more with his Laotian culture. He tells Khan that his frequent use of the English language, non-Lao furniture, and all-around Americanized lifestyle has caused him to forget where he came from, in a sense. So what does Khan do? He decides that they are going to start living as if they never left Laos. He starts growing his own celery, turns his pool into a reflecting pond, gets rid of his quote-unquote American furniture, and even joins a resistance group, all at the behest of Ted telling him that he's too Americanized. 
Eventually, Khan realizes how ridiculous it is. Well, we get on cargo plane and fight a louse. If we are not blown apart by anti-aircraft fire, we parachute into mountains. If we're not shot on way down or die on impact, we march into capital. And then, well, we'd probably all be shot or run over with tank. And Min tells him, Why you let Ted Wasana Song tell you what to do, what to like, what to think? Isn't that why we fled the communists in Laos and the Homeowners Association in Orange County? And decides to embrace what he has attained in the United States without guilt of neglecting his culture. Even still, Khan still tries to kiss Ted's ass whenever he appears. Ted! Wonderful to see you! Outside of his home, Khan is woefully disdainful of his neighbors, calling them ignorant rednecks all the time and believes himself to be superior to them. Which is funny considering he lives in the same neighborhood as the people he believes are beneath his status. He may have nicer things. Ah, oh, it's Hank Hill. What's the point? I have everything you have, but better. But at the end of the day, he's not really in any higher social standing than the Hills or the Gribbles. That and his father-in-law signed off on his housing loan, but we'll get more into that later. One of my favorite concentric episodes, Deconstructing Henry, depicts Khan as getting a huge promotion at work when his company lands a lucrative government contract. Khan, of course, wastes no time rubbing it in Hank's face. But when Hank isn't visibly jealous of him, Khan decides to go the extra mile. He lures Hank to his facility under the guise of considering a propane contract. While there, Khan shows Hank a new composite material the army wants to use on their new tanks via a golf club. After Hank acquiesces that Khan does indeed have a cool job, he immediately shuts down Hank and tells him he's not interested in... Your dinosaur gas. ...and admits that he was wasting his time all day. Just for my inquiry, I wonder why Hank was even allowed in the building in the first place if he isn't a government or a company employee. But whatever. Hank revealing to the guys what he learned about the composite company later that day eventually leads to Khan getting fired for breach of contract. Despite leaving his home without any income, Khan still lashes out at those helping him during this difficult time, leaving Hank to help pick up the pieces. Even when Khan leaves the home and Hank finds him, he refuses to come home until, as he puts it, I get jobs that make you cry every day. And he points out in this heartfelt speech, I can't fail. This is not supposed to happen to me. I'm Asian, for God's sake. More expected of me. You not understand. You somebody's worker bee. If I accept your redneck life, it like I bury myself alive. Khan's self-worth seems to be tied into being viewed as something more than average. He must be seen as someone higher up, even if those around him treat him as an equal. Khan doesn't want equal, he wants to step up. Hard work fine for you, sweat stains, but I meant for better things. But why is that? There's a small bit from the episode where Khan's niece from L.A. comes to live with Khan that speaks volumes. At the end of the episode, the niece is sent to live with another relative after she's caught trying to sell drugs. The relative is obviously Khan's brother. This brother lives on a ranch seemingly in the middle of nowhere and seems unfazed about how his niece is misbehaving, saying that she'll be shipped off to Laos to live with her grandmother if she screws up again. This can possibly indicate that some of Khan's family live more simple and humble lives. Since he's a descendant of fisherman family, Khan's drive to be someone that is highly respected due to his job and standing can be due to his family's modest roots. It can also be one of his sources of insecurities. Khan is also manic depressive, though it's unknown if it runs in his family. But what of his immediate family? Well, it's clear that he wants what's best for them, at least in his head. For example, he doesn't like Connie dating Bobby. Better she cry now for 10 minutes than spend 45 years crying that Bobby Hill still not get promotion at Dirt Factory. And doesn't want his mother dating Bill. He believes his mother is better than the town loser, even though his mother doesn't seem to mind one bit. In fact, Khan seems more okay with... Why not instead become bag lady or actress in pornographic film? Instead of dating Bill. However, once Khan gets past his own insecurities with his family's decisions, he does relent when he sees that his loved ones are happy. Late in the series, we are introduced to Khan's father-in-law, who comes for a visit. 
He constantly puts Khan down in his own home, which Min reminds him he helped sign for. Khan, needing a break, leaves and visits a karaoke bar, where he becomes a popular karaoke singer. Earning the adoration of the bargoers, Khan becomes a lot nicer and happier. He even finds out from his co-workers that he was forced to telecommute, when he initially believed that it was offered to him as a perk. With his newfound self-respect, he has a better outlook on his situation. However, when his father-in-law sings the same song he usually sings at a big event, Khan is defeated once again. Even with his neighbors' support, Khan eventually decides to let his father-in-law lay a verbal smackdown on him if it means he'll leave Khan and his family alone. After this, he then reverts back to being a jerk when there's no one else around to tear him down. This leads me to the marriage that he has with Min. Min and Khan have a good marriage, even if Khan offhandedly admitted, I already tried marrying into money. Min lied to me. Min is supportive of Khan and tries to cheer him up when he's down. He tried to wipe off his wife's birthmark at last year's Christmas party. That not your fault, Khan. Everyone there thought it was barbecue sauce. The two of them both have a ride-or-die attitude towards each other, and it shows in how readily Min is behind Khan on many things. The two of them decide to just let loose and become rednecks for a while. They quickly enter into a business together to make quick money. Well, what are you waiting for? Buy my video and learn the secret to success! Cut! Come on, ladies! Dr. Quarters is rocking your world! Look at him accordingly! And she leaves her comfort zone to practice shooting to get into the country club. Besides sharing the same interests, Min is also not afraid to stand up to Khan. I ate a squirrel quesadilla, but this is where I draw the line. Rock go through the window, I go home. Me? You, you crazy? Yeah, you gonna right. blow all our guest passes? How am I supposed to impress my work superiors? I got us in here, Khan, so it's my call. Take it or leave it. But she's also willing to stand up for him, too. He's my husband and the father to your only granddaughter. You have to talk to him and make this right. Khan's relationship with Connie can be viewed as a little more complex. Khan is the stereotypical hover parent. He pushes Connie into her academics, her music, and even her dating life. He even goes so far as to bribe Bobby into breaking up with her. While on the surface he wants Connie to succeed, he also points out that one of his ultimate goals is to... I make sure she practiced Mozart, get into Van Cliburn, then Ivy League Orchestra. From there she played Paris, Rome, then I take her back to my hometown of Luang Prabang and stick it up that nose! He uses Connie's genius and talents as a means to give him a leg up on others. However, when he believes Connie is suicidal, he immediately backtracks and bends over backwards to make her happy. Now one could make the argument that he doesn't want his golden child to die, but I don't think Khan is that heartless. I mean, just look at how he reacts here. No, oh, stop it! You're killing her! Oh, come on, Khan. I bet you never knew she could smile and play at the same time. As for the rest of the neighbors, there's a complex relationship as well. It's obvious Khan can't stand any of them, but there's a certain camaraderie there. My dreams are shattered. Yep, mine too. Have a beer. One that manifests especially when they have a common goal. In the episode where the former Dallas cowboy moves in on the street causing trouble, Khan synergizes with the guys to try to get rid of him. There are also times when they help each other, such as when the guys build Khan's swimming pool, repair his trampoline in exchange for mowing his lawn, or when Khan helps Hank build a grill while off his meds. I especially like the bit when the guys invite Khan to join their own golf group when Khan didn't get into Nine Rivers. Rainy Street Country Club? Dues are a six-pack every 18 holes. What do you say? It's also clear that despite how he treats him, Khan does have a lot of admiration for Hank, even to the point where he role-plays as him to get his rocks off with Min. He even considers Hank his best friend. You my best friend. You take care of them. I'm your best friend? He seems envious of Hank's relationship with Bobby. Sure, everything easy for you. You world's best father. I seen the mug. Me? I'm nothing. I want mug too, Hank Hill. 
and even seems to share an appreciation for the United States, just like Hank. Ha ha. Ah, you get in a baby way. I had to memorize all presidents. You couldn't do it. That stretch between Polk and a you can't wipe you out. You ever hear of Garfield? He more than a cartoon cat, you know. Though he'll throw in a pot shot every once in a while. Look how easy it is to get into this country. You can interpret Khan's low-key obsession with Hank as either enjoying watching him suffer or just trying to take him down a peg because he's so content with the station in life. You wish you could ride in my trunk? Even though Khan can't stand his neighbors, he does begrudgingly accept their kindness. And that's at the heart of who Khan is. By all accounts, he should be seen as just a rude jerk. The unlikable yet harmless antagonist, if nothing else. But peel back the layers, he's a good but flawed human who has his own goals that appear to be misguided at the best of times. But it's nice to see that his surroundings keep him grounded, if only for a few moments at a time. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Harvey McLeod, and I'm here to make videos for you, and I will see y'all next time. Bye bye